You're listening to the Sisterhood Podcast, where we believe that women rise when they lift each other. I'm Allison Reynolds. And I'm Tiffany Sobe. If it empowers, enlightens, or entertains women, you can bet we'll be talking about it here. Welcome to the Sisterhood Podcast. Today we are teaming up with the Rising Star Outreach nonprofit for this mini episode about connecting to yourself and others during social isolation. For those of you who listen to our podcast regularly, you know that we gather women together in person on a monthly basis to volunteer for different service organizations in our community. And in February 2020, we were lucky enough to volunteer for Rising Star Outreach, and we were so impressed with everything they're doing to help heal and empower the leprosy affected in India to live healthy and productive lives. So we could not be happier to be a part of their current Rise to Wellness initiative to promote more connection, healing, and inspiration during this time of social isolation. Since our byline is we rise when we lift each other and we're all about gathering and connecting women, this project is right up our alley. So let's do this, Tiffany. Okay, let's do it. So at the time of recording, we have been in social isolation for what? How long has it been now? (laughs) Close to four weeks. Oh, gosh. Is it really? (laughs) Yes. Uh, Oh, boy. And so for those of you who don't know us, we are both cooped up with seven family members. (laughs) I've got four kids, ages 12 to 22, who are home with me, as well as my husband and my 81-year-old father. And Tiffany, you've got five kids, ages 11 to 21, and your husband at home with you. It's a it's a lot of people. And I guess we should mention you have like 25 goats. And I have one dog that I swear <laughs> is worth 25 goats. It's 14. No, it's 15 goats. Oh, gosh. If you, you can't even keep track. It's too many. But we have a lot of life. We have a lot of energy in our homes right now. Anyway, I mention this because I think it's important for those of us who are doing so- social isolation with families to try to stay connected to those sanity-saving friends in our lives and also extended family members who might need us. But it's also important to try to stay connected to ourselves when we're stuck in a house full of people who often want or demand our attention all day long, right? I mean, it can suck the life out of you. Oh, boy, yes. Oh, boy, yes. So that's why we are going to address connecting with self and others today. All right. What do you think, Tiffany? Okay. This is what I've got. Even though I'm discovering through this isolation and social distancing that I am much more of an introvert than I realized, I do feel both the desire and the need to still reach out to those around me, those that I love, my friends and family members. So I've done this with Marco Polo, texting, FaceTime, and one of my favorites lately is every few days... Every few days, I choose three to four friends, and I send a postcard or note card in the mail to them. That is so sweet. How come I haven't gotten one? Well, maybe it's... Wait your turn, Allison. (laughs) I've always loved sending and, of course, receiving mail. And this one doubles because it also really feels like self-care for myself, too. So that's it. That is is so sweet and old-fashioned. I love that. Oh, My second one that I have is I'm trying to be a lot more gentle with myself during these times. I'm trying to strike a really good balance. I won't say really good. I'm trying to strike a balance (laughs) between being productive yet allowing myself to have some lazy days as well. These days of social distancing and the absence of anything and everything on our calendars is likely and hopefully never going to happen again. And while I want to look back at it as a gift in some ways, I don't want to waste my days away not doing much either. Yeah, I hear you. So I want to be gentle on myself because these times are uncertain. Things feel scary some days. We're in close quarters with family, as you said. And Mm -hmm. sometimes we just feel overwhelmed and frustrated. It's all a balance. And I'm trying to give myself grace. And I'm certainly not succeeding at it this balance perfectly, but I'm definitely giving it some deliberate effort. That's good. So my last one is journaling. You know, Allison, Mm. I have always been a decent journaler. It's something I'm very passionate about. But I admit in the last few years, I've gotten away from really writing my deep feelings and thoughts. 
And Mm. again, I bring up these times that they're so unique and such a strange opportunity we never could have imagined ourselves having that I want to remember them. And I want to remember my thoughts and feelings more deeply and more specifically. And I've learned from all these years that I've been an avid journaler that really one of the only ways to look back on an experience accurately is through writing and recording it. And it doesn't have to be anything Mm -hmm. fancy. Pick up a notebook, use a computer. Perhaps some people may just want to do a voice um, recording or even a video. Whatever is your style, but write or record or journal something. And perhaps you need journal prompts, and there are plenty out there. Or just make up your own, but write. That's what I would encourage everyone to write something. Okay, my first one is to edit your social media accounts. So I love Instagram. That's my main form of social media that I like to use. And I think it's especially important for many of us right now to stay connected with people through social media. But I want to suggest this idea of editing your social media accounts for people like myself who know they are susceptible to overwhelm or even a little bit of self-loathing during times of stress or vulnerability when scrolling social media. So I think just like we should avoid watching the news all day, everybody knows that's not good for your mental health. We should also put limits on our social media time and more specifically, because I think everybody agrees on that already, but more specifically right now, consider editing the accounts that you're following during this time. I would recommend muting or temporarily unfollowing any accounts that make you feel either overwhelmed or less than in any way during these days of high stress and uncertainty. I know for me personally, I just can't handle any accounts right now that are really pushing productivity or individuals that are sharing lots of tips and ideas for either like super organized family schedules or super magical (laughs) family memory making. Like I have to do things my own way based on my own family's personalities and needs. And some days that may just mean keeping everybody healthy and sane including myself. That kind of speaks to what you said about uh, striking a balance, you know? Absolutely. So I'm I'm still totally using social media to stay connected to others and also want to utilize, you know, those uplifting and helpful accounts, the information on a lot of those various accounts. But you better believe that I have muted or unfollowed certain accounts for the time being. Okay, the second one I would say, and you mentioned it already, For me, Marco Polo is my favorite way to stay connected to those family, extended family members and friends. So I'm referencing technology again because it really is a huge lifesaver. I mean, how many times have you mentioned to your kids in the past few weeks how much harder this social isolation gig would be if it were 1985 and all we had to stay connected was like expensive long distance phone calls, snail mail. Of course, you're doing snail mail, which I do think is very sweet. The newspaper, the 10 o'clock news. I mean, can you imagine doing this? Oh, I could not imagine it. It would be so, so different. So hard. So technology, everybody knows it's a double-edged sword, but it's mostly a huge blessing right now during this time. I totally feel that. And personally, I'm loving Marco Polo because I feel like FaceTime... And group calls on Zoom are great, but the Marco Polo app is to FaceTime and Zoom what texting is to phone calls. Because basically, it allows you to make videos of yourself talking, send them to an individual or group. They can view and respond when it's convenient for them and vice versa. So I really do. I mean, this is not like a paid advertisement for Marco Polo. (laughs) It shouldn't be sounding like that. But I just really love the Marco Polo app for that because it allows me to have that face-to-face, back-and-forth conversation without having to try to actually schedule and commit to a call at a specific time of day since you know day-to-day life right now with a house full of people can often be kind of chaotic yeah Uh, my last one would be to double down on your personal self-care routines this one is a way to stay connected to yourself if you are living with a bunch of people like we are who are always in your face like our families are (laughs) (laughs) the advantage of having older kids like we do and not having to bolt out of bed every morning to rush around and get everybody ready for school and out the door on time is that you can start your day off alone Enjoying the quiet time, getting your head together before your day with those same seven people and social isolation begins. So whether that's making your bed and meditating or exercise and setting goals or intentions for the day or maybe like in your case, journaling, I think having three to five things that you do for yourself first thing in the morning is really key to staying connected to yourself 
and keeping your sanity intact during this time. Do you think we have a couple minutes we could share a few favorite things? I do, because you know, it's one of our most popular segments in our regular episodes. So why not share a few favorite things that may be helpful during this time of social isolation? Let's do it. I'll share mine first. So my first one is Sky Joe Card Game. This is an easy yet fun card game that is enjoyable for both children and adults. And it's a game based on luck rather than strategy and skill. But it doesn't take very long to play and it's fast paced, fast moving and a fun game. My second one, again, going to my journaling, is a five year line a day journal. And this is an easy and quick way to journal a few lines for each day. Each page has space for five years worth of entries, and I'm on my fifth year of it, and I love seeing at a glance what I was doing on this particular day two, three, oh, four years so ago. Fun. And the, these so times, fun. yeah, and these times that we're living in now should be recorded, even if only a, a few sentences every day. My third is a good book that I recently read. I really loved it. It is called Wings Like a Dove by Camille Eady. And this book is a really feel-good book. It's a beautiful reminder of how similar people really are at our core, despite the book taking us on a journey of judgments and discriminations first. The book really is just a lovely and beautiful tribute to differences, bringing people together in unity and love. Yeah, that's an awesome thing about right now. More time to read. It's yeah. great. Or listen to audiobooks or whatnot. Okay, my three things. My first one is something you can do for yourself. Maybe you can do it with family. Um, there's a free Yale University course on the website Coursera that's titled The Science of Wellbeing. And it is the... It, just came out in 2018 as a you know live class at Yale, but it soon became the most popular popular and well-attended class ever in the history of Yale. So the little description is, in this course, you'll engage in a series of challenges designed to increase your own happiness and build more productive habits, which is something I think we could all use. We could all benefit from. Yes. And it's free because of coronavirus pandemic, which is really, really awesome of them to offer that. So number two is it a day. So my husband and I met and lived in Japan. Everywhere you go in Japan, they are known for their super high-tech, fancy bidets. And we always wanted to get one in our home, and we just happened to get one right before the pandemic hit. And I think a lot of them are selling out now because of all of the toilet paper shortages. (laughs) And I don't know how long it's going to take before the toilet paper supply is back to normal in the grocery stores, but... We have not had to resort to using the bidet yet. We actually got it for my father who lives with us, but um, it's there in case. I know, I like knowing it's there, and that's just something I'm going to throw out to anybody who's freaking out about a possibility, the possibility of not having enough toilet paper. You could get a non-electric bidet. And then my third one is just pure fluff, pure self-care. I have a bath pillow and a little stash of bath bombs And whenever I can pull it off, I make an escape for the bath when things just get too nutty around here. Good for you. I need to invest in a bath pillow. Those are great. Thank you for sharing them. And thank you for joining us here today. We are thankful to Rising Star for giving us the opportunity to share this mini episode with you. We invite you to listen to our regular podcast episodes. You can find the Sisterhood Podcast on your favorite podcast platform. We also invite you to follow along with us on Instagram or Facebook. Here at the Sisterhood Podcast, we believe we rise when we lift each other. We encourage each of you to reach out in love and friendship to the women and people around you as we seek for connection with ourselves and others during these periods of social isolation. Remember, we are all in this together. So like if it's spring break and we're stuck at home, I wanted it to be fun. I was like, planning it's not, it's quarantine. Activities. You've been stuck at home for the last three weeks. I know, but I thought without school, we could, you know, hey, let's, I just had all these little organized activities I thought we could enjoy together and I couldn't get anybody on board and I'm just like, fine, whatever. I hate yeah. my life and I hate you. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let that be the outcome. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> one yet <laughs> <laughs> and here we're going to talk about how to survive I know we're like the biggest hypocrites ever <laughs> 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 so 
say anything about getting along with my family. I, well, obviously we didn't choose that topic. <laughs> We're not equipped to teach that. 